Yeah. I'd like to open the Village Council work session meeting July 30th, 2018, 9 a.m. Village Hall. Um, first up, we have adoption of the agenda. Do we have any changes, additions? Yes and yes. Start? Okay. Um, I know you need to add some stuff. And I want to pull the minutes from unfinished business because I just got back into town literally like 10 minutes ago. Okay. And have not had a chance to Remove read them. Remove them to the August 9th Yeah, meeting. since we actually finally got a transcript of them, um, I'd like to read those thoroughly. And, make and that's sure to the okay, August 9th? If that's okay. 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 Anything else? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to move that the agenda be amended to include new items three and four. Item three will be discussion of the appointment of Ms. Mary Scoot to the Village Council, including possible action to recognize her as a de facto member of the Village Council until such time as the Court of Law rules to the contrary. Okay, anything else? Item, item four will be discussed and to discuss and possibly take action to authorize the Village Attorney and or outside counsel to file a core warrant or action to determine the validity of Ms. Scoot's appointment to the Marvin Village Council. Remaining item, uh, uh, remaining item, uh, yeah, remaining okay. items. Uh, and then just we everything will follow. Renumbered accordingly. Okay, okay, so then we'll go into administrator's report. No, we'll oh, actually go yeah, to, to public, public hearing. Yeah. Hearings that'll be five. Five and then administrative report. Administrative six, six. Okay. and then I would like to remove uh, until we get some because there's nothing to prepare for it. Um, discussion consideration of employing contracts that's on seven G. Okay. Remove that, and I'm happy to discuss it, but we have no packets, and I think that was Robert's deal. Okay. Um, also, I'd like to table. Discussion and consideration of branding and website design presentation. Uh, I'm not connected yet with the person okay. who's going to do a um, okay. meeting in that. Okay. Do you want that to go back on the um, yes, please. August August 9th. We're going to shoot for that. So. And then just for time's sake, let's take off council comments since I know we've got no places to be. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. Anything else? No. Nope. I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> Next up, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <laughs> Item three. Okay, so item three is um, discussion and consideration of Mrs. Uh, Mary Scoot to Village Council, including possible action to recognize her as a de facto member of the Village Council until such time as the Court of Law rules to uh, the contrary. Um, real quick, and, and as we start talking about this, I'm going to make a personal statement, I could submit this for you at a later time, um, but uh, for the public record, it is my personal opinion that Mrs. Scoot's appointment on May 31st, 2018 was invalid due to a number of reasons which can be litigated in court. However, in an effort to avoid further disruption and chaos and recognizing that this issue is distracting us from the important business we were elected to conduct, on the advice of counsel, I am willing to recognize Ms. Scoot at this time as either a usurper or de facto officer, as she believes that there was some colorable moment, a colorable appointment. I am not validating her appointment, conceding in any manner, or making it permanent. This, it is my expectation that a court will rule her appointment null and void. Excuse me. Uh, so sorry. Sorry about that. No, sorry. Here. Do that. Yeah. I have no idea who that yeah. is. Right. Sorry, Chip. That's Chip Brown, of all things. So there we go. Okay. I don't know how that happened. My apologies. Um, where was I? Okay. We'll start, I'll start uh, 
In an effort to avoid further disruption and chaos and recognizing that this issue is distracting us from the important business we were elected to conduct, on the advice of counsel, I'm willing to recognize Ms. Scoot at this time as either a usurper or de facto officer, as she believes that there was some colorable appointment. I am not validating her appointment, conceding in any manner, or making it permanent. It is my expectation that a court will rule her appointment null and void, at which time we can proceed with filling Ron Salomeo seat. Until that time, I think it's the best course of action is to allow Ms. Scoot to participate in the meetings and focus on the work of the village. Any comments from you guys uh, about this appointment? I mean, I agree with you. I don't think it's valid, but I'm going to go on the advice of council on how to move forward. We need to be doing the business of the village, and if this is the best thing that we need to do right now, then I'm going to look to council's direction on that. Next. I'm going to echo, this. I'm going to echo the sentiment, and I'm going to make a motion. Okay. Uh, recognizing that the council has previously declared their seat vacant, and upon further advice from the council, I move to recognize Ms. Mary Scoot as a de facto officer of the Marvin Village Council until such time as the Court of Law determines the validity of her May 31st, 2018 appointment to the Council. Further, I state for the record that neither this motion nor its approval in any way validates Ms. Scoot's appointment or otherwise makes it permanent. Okay. So I'll need a motion to approve the motion. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion passes. Um, next up on the item is item four, which is, um, I believe, discuss an action to authorize the village attorney and or outside counsel to file a quo warranto action to determine the validity of Ms. Scoot's appointment to Marvin Village Council. So, um, can I just have a motion on that? Okay. Yeah, okay. I make a motion that either the village attorney and or outside counsel, as determined by the village attorney, file a quo warranto action to challenge the May 31st, 2018 appointment of Ms. Mary Scoot to the Marvin Village Council, provided that such action will be filled, be filed if and only if it is authorized by, authorized by the North Carolina Attorney General's office. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. So on to um, public hearings. Um, this will be 5A, which is um, conduct public hearing, consider condi conditional use permit number 18-12115 to allow rear yard and ground swimming pool. Um, so who has... <laughs> so, I just want to go on the record. I looked at this, and it looks like it's in your backyard. It is. It's, it's just, um, there was an ordinance where if our backyard, the backyard adjoins a side yard, you have to get this. I, I, just looking at it. It, it is like in his rear yard, but it abuts the neighbor's side yard. Okay, okay. So that's when we have to go through this. It happens about three or four times a year, especially on cul-de-sacs. Okay. It just allows you guys and the planning board to look at it and put in extra screening, okay. landscaping if possible, or yeah. um, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So, so I have some um, pictures if you guys want to look at. And that's their lot right there. That's what I need because these weren't great on the photographs. I know. <laughs> 121 Wingfoot Lane, and then here it is in color uh, Google Maps. That's a better. But as you can see, the his okay. rear yard abuts the neighbor's side yard. This one shows it better. Okay. Um, don't What's that? And perhaps we can redo this. Oh, then, yeah, first of all, you need to open oh, the public hearing. Sorry, thank yeah. you. Okay, so I'm going to leave I'm going to, hold on a second. I need to open the public hearing. Okay, so. I'm sorry. And make sure no one has any um, comments, fixed opinions about this, that okay. they can be fair and impartial. My apologies. Went right into it. So I need a motion to open the public hearing uh, for conditional use permit number 18-12115. So All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Um, has anyone signed up to speak? <clears throat> yes. Well, I don't know. Are you going to speak? If 
If you need to, okay. He'll have to. Um, you'll be sworn. He'll have to be sworn, sworn in. Sworn, in. sworn in with Kelly. Yeah. yeah. So first, ask if anyone has any information they need to disclose. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as counsel goes, does anyone have any information that you need to disclose or uh, that you were privy to that we don't know about? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. I, I'm not I'm the simple getting too, <laughs> too quick there. Okay. This property is located at 121 Wingfoot Drive. It's zoned R. Marvin Residential. The residence is located in a book subdivision. Surrounding properties are zoned R. Marvin Residential also. The applicant proposing to construct a 31 by 21 foot in-ground swimming pool to be located in the rear yard per the Marvin zoning ordinance. However, a conditional use permit is required when a pool is located in a lot where the rear yard abuts the side yard of an adjacent lot. So swimming pools are an accessory structure in Marvin. Their um, <coughs> the setbacks for this pool are all met, 20 foot side and rear. This shows the setbacks. It's 40 feet from the rear property line. And uh, the equipment is located, it's on the left side of the house there, and it's screened, and it's 60 feet from the property line. It needs to be 20. So swimming pool is located on lots where the rear yard abuts a side yard, and the adjacent lot shall be subject to a CUP, and that brought us to this process. The planning board did review the CUP, and they recommended unanimously to pass it. Um, the proposed pool complies with all setback requirements. The proposed pool will not violate the intent of the R. Marvin Residential District, nor will it significantly impact adjoining property owners. The pool is located 40 feet from the rear yard. Additionally, significant landscaping exists on the site at the rear and side <coughs> property lines. This landscaping sufficiently screens the side yard of the adjacent lot and will help to make the sound associated with the pool. This, uh, and I'll go through the finding of the facts, which you all have to vote on each one. This use will not materially endanger the public health or safety if located where proposed and developed according to plan. This use meets all required conditions and specifications. This use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting property, and the use is a, it's not a public necessity, sorry. The location and character of the use, is, if developed according to the plan as submitted and approved, will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located and will be in general, and will be in general conformity with this chapter and the village land use plan. And there are no additional review criteria. The request is consistent with the intent of the Village of Marvin zoning ordinance. Staff has identified no effects from the proposal which would result in a significant impact on adjoining properties. Therefore, staff recommends approval of CUP 18 dash 12115 subject to the following conditions. Number one, fencing around the pool must comply with North Carolina Residential Code. Number two, applicant will provide proposed landscape screening. And number three, all setback requirements will be met as outlined in application. <coughs> and here is a picture of the proposed landscaping. So it will be, it's pretty thick back there already. Here's a picture of the what, What's back there right now? So the, those evergreens? <clears throat> or they, do they um, leaves fall off, or how does that? Uh, I, I don't believe they fall off, but I, I guess I'm not sure they're evergreen. I don't, I don't know too much about, about yeah, trees. I don't what, 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 hollies. Guys, okay. for what it's worth, like I got, um, you know, I travel a good bit as as a as a realtor, and I travel and I do speed engagements. So when I'm at home, I got two little boys and a wife, and so. I've been wanting to put additional landscaping around for privacy anyways, even without a pool, and I waited so that I would go through this process in the right way. So between having two little boys and my wife there, I wanted to have extensive more landscaping than we have as it is um, around the property line, um, especially wherever the pool is. So um, we'll probably end up doing even more landscaping than what we propose to add. Um, one, out of respect for our neighbors, and two, to, you know, for my boys and my wife. Okay. And this says Green Giant. It proposes in the red. 
and this is variegated good at holly down around the uh, equipment. Okay. Which that doesn't even or let the neighbors. It's back there where the red is. Yeah. That lets the side yard of the neighbor. And I assume that's is, oh the, the new red ones. It looks like an L right there. That is an air conditioning unit, or is that the pump? No, that's the pump. That's stuff. a pull that's pump. Equipment. <clears throat> equipment pump. Okay. So they're covering that, which is good. Because that's a straight shot from the street, I think. And, and also, guys, we're going to add, Joe, to your point, um, south of where those four, uh, five red circles are, yep. where our property goes to the front yard, mm -hmm. we're going to put a bunch of you know, really nice trees inside the property fence so that no one has to look in. And look in. No one, right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Just additional. Again, we, we wanted to wait so that they wouldn't have to be knocked down when, right. when the bulls go. Okay. Any other questions from council? You? I have a question. Um, will the entire application be filed with the permit when approved? Yes. Okay. Just because in the past when people have come back to kind of inspect and find out whether things were landscaped, it wasn't always clear what was proposed um, and what was approved. So I just want to be sure that whatever's uh, in the application actually gets filed. Okay. Um, Nothing else. I think I need to go through each individual one now. Which and, and yes. the Just ones the findings on of fact. One. So I'll need a motion on each of the findings of fact. Okay. Um, and keep in mind, if you if anyone uh, votes nay against any of these, the, this will not pass. I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do we need to close the public hearing yeah. first? Yeah. You, if you're no one else is going to. Okay. So no one else is going to. So I'll need a motion to close the public hearing. Sure. All in favor? Aye. The motion passes. So as I go through these, I'll just need a. Uh, um, and it, correct me. If motion passes. Does it have to pass unanimously or just have to pass? Okay. All right. All right so we'll go through each individual. Yeah, just majority. Simply yes, majority. majority. Okay, so first off, I need a motion that the use will not material endanger your public health or safety if located where proposed and developed according to plan. So you agree? Yep. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I need a motion to agree that uh, the use meets all required conditions and specifications. Well, actually, it does, I didn't ask. It does, does it meet the newest landscape and screen code? Yes. All is in, all's in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Uh, next up is the uh, uh, agreed that the use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or budding property or the use is a public necessity. All is in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> so the agree that the location and character of the use, if developed according to the plan, is submitted in approval with will be in harmony with the area in which it has to be located and, and will be in general conformity with this chapter and the village land use plan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And finally, the um, agreed that the additional review criteria as stated in this chapter shall be considered and addressed where required. Do I need to read those? No, there's no additional there's review, no review no criteria. Um, um, all those in favor? Aye. The motion passes. Um, I think that's it for that. And then so. a, a motion for approval of CUP 18-12115, okay. subject to the following conditions, and read out each of those conditions and make sure on the record he agrees to each of those conditions. Okay. So I'll need the motion to pass um, CUP number 18-12115 to allow rear yard and ground swimming pool. Um, and with the agreement that, didn't I read these? Yep. To, okay, so that the fencing around the pool must comply with the North Carolina Residential Code. The applicant will provide proposed landscape screening and all required setbacks will be met as outlined in the application. Yes. Uh, agree to that. Okay. Uh, actually, can I amend that motion and add that all documents submitted with the application be kept on file? Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. All documents kept on file. Are you all right with that, David? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'll need a motion for the approval of CUP number 18-12109. Oh, I'm sorry. 18-12115. 
to allow the rear yard and ground swimming pool. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. <coughs> Start construction. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, next up, we have uh, the public hearing and consider temporary use permit number 18-12109 for National Night Out event at Marvin <coughs> Eford Park on August 7, 2018 from 6 to 11 p.m. The motion to open the uh, Hold on, let me get there. Look in the public hearing. I don't think so. We'll find out. We need to open it first, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you open the meeting? Yeah, you did. Open the public hearing. Motion to open the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Anyone signed up? Who made the motion to open? Aye. Okay, I did. I did. And, um, and no, one, no, one's no one signed up. Mm -mm. So motion no. to close. The CUP. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Who has this? Yeah, the report, but there is, and I read it. The only thing I, I, I had a question on is that we thought, I know we talked about one of those food trucks. Did we? Well, for National I know that Night Out, donated, we have, right? we have oh, yeah. Ed for doing Ed hamburgers and hot dogs, dogs and, and chips all donated, right? Okay. Pretty much. How's that going? It's going pretty good. Uh, I've got $500 from Kohl's. Um, I've got um, two fifty from Target and a hundred from Province, and I sent or not Province, Publix, and then I've got uh, I sent out an email yesterday to all the HOAs asking for donations. So it's going pretty good. I got a van lined up. Got the horses again this year for the kids. And, oh, cool. Um, they're uh, Kelly's tagging the movie onto the end of it, so it's, it's shaping up pretty good. Okay. Um, I don't know about budget-wise, but we're still under the same budget with the, the village, right? Typically, and I know I usually reach out to my HOA and say, hey, every year you guys, they donate something and stuff. Right. As an HOA, have you reached out to the HOAs yet? Yeah, I sent out, uh, Kelly sent out an email, I think, a while back, and then I've sent one out over the weekend. I haven't heard anything back yet, but um, I know the village previously is giving me a budget of $500 for it, and generally I try to run I usually I run a break even where it doesn't cost the village a thing. So okay. I mean it might cost you a couple hundred bucks this year, but I don't know if you have to tell it. Yeah. Well, again, as my argument to the HOAs is we used to do this individually. It used to cost and trying to get you guys to come and fire trucks and all the kids and stuff. So now it's centralized and stuff. So th there's got to be a value to that to each HOA, and we do have um, Mike Gilboy who sits on all the he meets on a. I think quarterly basis with all the HOA presidents. Oh, okay. If you reach out to him and, and, and let him know that just uh, asking if any of the HOAs would be willing to donate or participate, again, because it's it's all about community and this is a perfect way, and whatever and, uh, it is. Mike had the, um, the HOA board meeting at uh, Firethorn and he invited me to it this year, so I did kind of a uh, oh, you did? Community watch meeting and Perfect. stuff with them, and I talked to them about it at that time, but I just sent them an email over the weekend to refresh them. And see if I, I, I put an email that it doesn't matter if the donations come in before or after the event. Just okay. And it doesn't matter how much it is that we keep all that confidential, so. Okay. And it could be. Yeah. 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 I, I, I sometimes are out there flipping that. Hopefully, I will hopefully it's, a, it's a cool day and stuff. And the lighting we've gotten all figured out for sure, too, as it gets dark. Lighting in the parking lots in the back, temporary lighting in the back. I, uh, I haven't done anything about that. I didn't even think about that. I know it's darker than, you know, I mean, just. <clears throat> Since I've been here, we haven't done the extra lighting because I think of the expense, and I, I think they added some lights to the parking lot, but probably not that backfield. I just had my own personal was, experience thought, um, of tripping in the parking lot. The movies, movies can be like spotlight really dark in the movies. Yeah. 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 We yeah. haven't yeah. arranged any did, rental lighting, I know that. But when they do, when people are leaving, what happens if they're parking in that one where the horse corral is back there? If they did temporary lighting and sh well, not one towards of the, the emergency movie. vehicles be back there and have their lights on just for lighting and it's, wouldn't have to have any yeah. extra. I mean, I don't know. Lighting. I guess you could put a few off, but he's out there directing traffic to get people out. Uh, I just know but, that but any don't event they have we have at night, it's too? very dark out there. And the EMS out there too? Mm -hmm. Can I make a comment? Uh, we are adding a movie on at the end, and I 
think emergency vehicles and things probably won't stay around for the, for the movie. For the yeah. movie. Yeah, so, and it's going to be darker than normal, so I think because okay. we're adding the movie on, we might want to rent something out of there. Let's, let's, let's look into that. I'll only because I've personally okay. fell in the parking lot because I never saw the big railroad ties. <laughs> As, and they're on the closest parking so I never saw them and almost did a face plant. So. Um, it's, it's part of it, it's 6 to 8, and then the movie will start at dusk, so it's probably not going to be over till 10.30 or so. And Yeah, and that's and again, not shining towards the movie, but shining out towards the parking <laughs> lot. Did Eric usually. have some temporary lighting down there at the barn at one point that we used to use? Just to I think when, when Karen Dewey was here, they used to get temporary lighting, but I was told when I started that there were extra lights added probably to the front lot. But I'm thinking there's not anything. I think there was to the front, but there's nothing to the back. I so think it's uh, week too. like a one time rental or something like that. That would be only my only recommendation as I look through this. Well, I don't have anything else. They did rent into it on the street. That's what they did is they rented the extra lights. Right, but not since I've been here, not in the last three events. All right, why don't we look, can we look into it and see what yes, we need to do? Yes, I'll look into it. Perfect. All right. Anything else? What do we need to do? Recommendation? Yep. Someone want to make the motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve TUP number 18-12109 to allow National Night Out and Movie Night to be held at the Marvin Eford Park on August 7th, 2018 from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion, motion passes. <laughs> um, next up, unfinished business. Uh, is that right? Administrator's report. Administrator's report. Right. I almost skipped over you. Uh, All the work you've been have. doing. Thank you, by the way. Uh, I have just a couple items to discuss. Uh, first thing is the engineering report. As you know, we've been looking at the possibility of potentially purchasing the Reasons House um, for the next city hall, or village hall, I'm sorry. We have an engineer coming out to look at the property this sometime this week to see it's a structural engineer to see if um, structurally can handle the load, looking at the floor loads and, and the foundations. So hopefully we'll have a report back to you at a subsequent meeting here shortly on that property to see if that is a legitimate option. Um, uh, when they do, well, I just had a quick question on, on that because you, we have someone officially hired for that right we do okay yes. Yes. so they know that to, to work through yeah, the appointment schedule through scheduling now. as they would if they were looking at the house as yes. a, a potential and I, I was going to get with you this sometime this week the guy is right. actually a broker himself too oh, okay so he can he can actually do it through oh. his listing if you're not available perfect okay. at a certain time right. but a staff member would i would go over there while he's okay there. and just out of for Clarity, we found him how I know we were struggling to find the right person. He was someone do. that we had on file that Laura had been in contact with previously. I'm not sure the connection. Laura had given me his contact from, I guess, when she called around to look at engineering costs for coming out to look at it. And initially, he had estimated around $7,500 to conduct the engineering report. However, we're going to do a quick walkthrough and kind of get just a tentative price of how much he thinks it's going to cost to make the changes and see if we want to move forward with an actual official analysis. So, okay. Um, we'll have that done sometime this week and hopefully we'll have a report back for your next council meeting. By August 9th? I would, I would assume so. Okay, so it's we're kind of flying at 30,000 feet Correct. just trying to get an idea of what what would need to be changed by for sure to make it a municipal. Correct. And okay. this would not include any ADA. Um, I have to hire someone additional for that, but we're not assuming the $7,500 is going to be in addition to whatever ADA is. Right. That's and, that. and while I'm no expert on ADA, the meeting I attended is, you know, you need basically where the public is, you need access, and, and, and that's it. And I think there's, there's ability to do a simple ramp in the back um, and come through and they can access it, and then we would need to change one of the bathrooms in there that is actually, I think it's the master bedrooms bathroom. We would, I, I see it as just basically eliminating the shower and putting in a help, um, an ADA compliant bathroom in that right. facility over there. And then maybe opening up the wall if we have large meetings and stuff. And uh, But if they get over a certain point, we'd have to have as an option the yeah, church we'll and stuff have. like that or something. Have you done the ADA compliance over the home at the park? 
it, it goes much beyond bathrooms. There's still lighting, there's width of the, the, the sidewalks on the outside. Um, there has to be proper graveling and, and paving for people to get right. to and from parking lots. So there's actually quite a bit. I don't know how much they're going to be able to assess just by doing a preliminary overview, but um, the council might want to consider making sure that that's considered before they make any decisions. Right. Once we get the structural engineer in there to see if it's something that we want to pull the trigger on, if you know it's for sure that it's a, an option, then we'll have the ADA come in and make sure that. I, I guess the, the premise that I had is if the structural engineer goes in there and said, you're going to have to redo the entire foundation, it's going to cost you $500,000 to do it, and that's probably not a viable option. Now, if they go in and say, you've got to make these changes structurally, it's going to cost 50000 then it's probably still on the table as an option. So I just wanted to, didn't want to waste too much money, so I wanted to make sure that it was still a viable option before it really went any further with that. Just because some of those improvements can be really expensive, so just want to be sure. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see, the Newtown Marvin Road traffic update. We've been analyzing the traffic patterns over there, and we were hoping the detours. We've been in contact with DOT, and, and they were under the premise that it takes some time for people to get adjusted to detours, and so they were thinking the traffic congestion in that area would slow down after a couple of weeks. However, that has not happened. So um, we actually contacted the Sheriff's Department. They are potentially starting this afternoon. So hopefully we'll have some of that traffic. Started doing what? The traffic control. Why and where? On Marvin, Newtown. Marvin, Marvin, that's Marvin, where it's, here. it's Marvin, Marvin Road here. Yeah, in the evenings only, I think. Yes. In mornings, I've not seen any Correct. issues and stuff. Okay. Seems to be going pretty well, and they look to be on schedule. I actually went over there, by the way, but we, we'll... Um, so we will have to do, circle. potentially, we may have to do a budget amendment at the end of the year. We'll hope to absorb that within our operating budget somewhere, um, but just know that is a possibility that we may have to do an amendment for that later on. Okay. We'll just kind of wait and see how it goes for the year. Um, I passed around some new agenda <coughs> sheets that I'm proposing to do, I'm trying to change up the agenda formatting a little bit to make it a little easier a little more transparent and, and make it easier on staff as well and, and, and for y'all too. The sheet that I'm proposing basically would take the place of having Barbie go in here and number each item. As you know, she numbers item agenda number 4A for any supporting documentation. This would merely be a cover sheet for your agenda packets, so it would encompass pretty much a high-level view of if there's any budgetary impacts on whatever it is we're requesting and it would suffice for her not having to include those, cover sheet, those numbers. So we would hopefully be able to color, make these sheets color so it's easier for y'all to flip through your agenda packets and have it pop right out so you're not actually flipping through looking at the top of the page. With that being said, um, we would scan these documents in, have it into one actual file instead of you know 14 different files or whatever it is when y'all are looking through your agenda packets, um, if you have them if they're emailed to you. So if there's no objections with that or you don't want to see any changes to the proposed sheet, I'm open for discussion, but that's just kind of generally what I'm proposing at this point. So we could try it next That's next what I meeting. say. I say let's try it. See what see it looks it like and see, yeah, see the flow of it. And, but yeah, I like it. Yeah. And if it makes your, your, I don't know if we need a motion on it, but if it makes your jobs easier and yeah. able to, uh, yeah. you know. Let's try it out. Make Is this a view of a staff report or just a cover So on, it would, on things that would require a staff report that if it's more formal in nature, we would have an, a memo or a staff report attached to the back of it. But if it's something just mundane in nature, we would just kind of include some of that in, in um, those types. Like, for instance, when, uh, Nancy asked for a, a tax return or something like that. We'll just include that. One of these. Okay. I just think it makes it a little easier on, on the back end. And going through the agenda review process this last go round, it, it takes a lot of time on me and Barbie to sit down and open each individual file and match it up. So if there's a way we can make it easier on the back end, it's just it's easier for us. So we'll try it next go round. I also want to let you know that um, if the cell phones have been ordered. They're on the way. We. Uh, we're able to purchase the eights, iPhone eights, and we did get insurance with them, so if you know, they're lost or stolen or broken, they'll be covered. They should be absorbed fully in the budget. Any questions on it? We should have those in the next week or two. Yeah. Thank you. And then last, y'all have an upcoming joint PRG meeting on August 30th. I didn't know if there was anything specific y'all wanted to see on that agenda as we're preparing for that. Just whatever PRG wants to talk about. Okay. Oh, it's PRG. 
I thought she said uh, planning board. And I didn't remember planning board. So. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, next up, I guess that would be five, six, okay, seven six. unfinished business, seven A. Nope, which was tabled. So I know, but it's now A is. Oh, yeah, the, A is, yeah. Um, PRG, sorry. PRG uh, board chair update. Um, we have discussion and consideration of community gardens and consideration of event subcommittee. And I think we have oh, Mary Sarkin. Yeah. Thank you, Mary, for being here. Um, Christina and I have gotten, I think, some um, complaints or requests from people who own uh, plots of community garden that were damaged during the shutdown because mm -hmm. they weren't able to water. There was one day that it water Because the beds were raised, um, you have to water, and particularly this time of year, at least every other day. Um, there was only one day of rain during the closure. So in my opinion, they do have legitimate, um, you know, uh, request for damages or whatever you want to call it. Um, the question was, do you give it to everybody? And also, what what are you doing? Are you uh, what dollar amount? And I spoke to Christina. There were, I, I don't know how many there were. I think there were two people that complained. Um, we've we've had some time, and no one else has complained. So verbally, uh, you know, officially. And I would say you just compensate the people who did complain. And then if other people complain later. Um, the, the problem is it's hard to quantify because everything was getting to the point where it was just ready to harvest. Well, you missed that window. So there's really not a, a way you can quantify, you know, what they, you know, they did all that work leading up to it. But, um, you know, you're paying for is it complete damage or just partial damage? I mean, is there any it's, kind of it was a, just It was a wide range. Okay. Uh, you know, um, they weren't able to like harvest their fruit and stuff. So a lot of times, plants quit producing after that, and also with the drought, it um, basically your tomatoes don't taste very good <laughs> if they don't get enough water. So, right. Yeah. You know, even if they were able to harvest them, you know, they they weren't right. any good. So. So like she said, we officially had two people request reimbursements. We collected a total of. Seven hundred and seventy dollars in revenue for the community gardens. If council is subjective to re reimbursing the fees that individuals paid for the year upon request of them, you know, letting us know that the work was damaged, we have. We I did have staff go out and actually have the numbers of the beds, as you'll notice in your agenda packets at the staff report of the ones that were damaged. So council can either, you know, reimburse all of the. the um, folks in the community gardens or they can just come in and request it and we'll do and it at, at twenty five dollars a plot. Right. Okay. Or do nothing. Well, I was I was fine with what I read here and stuff like that. I don't know if there's any comments from Nick or anyone that no. wants to opine on uh, the really. damage if you know, I didn't know how much was going to be done and stuff, but obviously if it, to your point, if they did that and they want to come forward, I think that's the right thing to do or propose for the next year or just give them the $25 feedback. Yeah, I think um, at this point, it, it seems like a long time in the future and, the, you know, people don't want to decide now if they want to take plots next year. So I think compensating them now would be better as far as making them feel like they were, you know, made whole versus right. saying, well, we'll just not charge you next year if you decide. Right. Uh, I think that would be better to, right. to give them so something we're, we're, we're talking about just refunding them their fee that they paid for. Right, yeah. Yeah, give them the fish for them. And, and hopefully, they'll, they'll, hopefully they'll be satisfied with the $25. I, don't, I really don't know if they're going to be satisfied or not. So the recommendation in here is to give them one year, next year's free rental, right? Yeah. Not necessarily the refund. Mm -hmm. Although I agree that at the very least they should get the rental fee back from this year. Because you also have to keep in mind not just the rental fee, these people have probably planted vegetables, paid for seed, bought materials, soil, and the least we can do, if you ask me, is not only refund their money from this year, but also give them an additional year next year, in my opinion. Because the twenty five dollars just with those materials that they lost alone is quite a bit. Yeah, a twenty five is really nothing as far as I'm concerned. So if we if we could lay on it, they get next year free too, that would be part of the Yeah. 
So I'll, if, that, if you're ready, I'll make a motion. A motion to refund all community garden members the full cost of this year's rental plus an additional year of use for no extra charge. Now, are you saying everybody or just the people? I think, I think the people that come forward and have said something. If she makes a motion and later determines that she's no longer a council member. Does that still valid? It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll still be valid. Okay. Thanks. I believe it will. I just want to clarify that, that it's all or just people complaining. It's the only thing else. So what do we would go here with the people that are complaining first? Yeah. I mean, I said if they, they come to us and stuff, we're going to make it right. And they can right. it. We're going to make it right. So the motion, that, that motion on the table is as, as for everyone, but it can be amended by, by the, any other That's, I, council. I'd say right now make the motion to include the bed numbers that we went out and looked at. Okay. And then if anyone comes forward, we'll, you know, we'll let uh, maybe let's staff start. or yeah, decide. Let him, the administrator. The yeah. administrator make that call and, you know, saying, okay. So you want to amend her motion to include these beds that are in the report? But only. Yes. And then anyone else coming. Anybody that comes forward. After to that, if they want to. And, um, do, do we want to make an announcement through our website or something like that? Well, I, mean, I, I, I think we can just notify the ones that are here. Okay. And then, um, and then as a, and then as a um, one on one basis, as, as someone comes forward, they will pass it on to Christine. To your point, I think we would have heard from them by now and stuff. That, right. Right. Next, I mean, these, yeah, we'll get the, the bed numbers here, I mean, uh, whatever it is, 10 or 11. These were all, you say, all show significant lack of water damage. So if somebody's looked at that and actually verified that them beds are, mm -hmm. I guess you have, I don't know what I looked oh, at. Yeah, I looked at them and I think. Um, now, the, the other, I mean, I don't know how many, so the other beds that were there don't appear to be damaged as far as you can see. So I mean, I, I don't see that somebody comes in and says, oh, yeah, you're giving it away, my bed was damaged too. Yeah. Right? Well, I, mean, I, I, I was limited to, to these that you guys have determined were but, damaged. I mean, they were the most significant. It, it's hard, sort of hard to tell yeah. well, you know, yeah. how much was. Yeah. Yeah. Again, well, I, well, I want to, you know, <laughs> make right the people that yeah. were damaged because of what occurred. I don't want to just make it an open season for everybody to come in. Right. Say, That's a good point. Effect, um, All right. So let's does do it make this. sense to <laughs> take a picture of it? Is it too far beyond it's that? Too far beyond. Okay. So we can't really do the, the 10, and then if anybody else comes in and complains, let staff make the call. Let Christine make the call. Yeah. Yeah. Do a case by case. Yeah. Okay. So there's a motion on the table, as and it was amended. Um, are you okay with what you got? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And next up, uh, subcommittee. Yeah. Um, in April, uh, PRG was asked to recommend other events for the park. I believe that there were some uh, dollars left over uh, in the budget for this year. So in May, after thinking about it, we, we discussed some uh, possible events. Um, the, the one that we really liked was having something in uh, October as a fall event. Um, and we were going to review those at the, uh, our joint retreat. And then in uh, June, we some, someone on the council, I don't know who, but they heard about it and they said, oh, we're going to have a fall event. And so we talked more about it. So anyway, um, at that meeting um, in June, um, staff told us that they really did not have sufficient staff to plan events. Um, so our answer was, since we do have the ability to have subcommittees, um, and we had one of our new um, board members, Vishwana, Thon. I can never, we call him Vish because I can never pronounce his name, Vishwanathan Savarama. Um, anyway, Vish. We'll go with Vish. <laughs> yeah. Vol volunteered to chair it. Um, no one else uh, volunteered. So, um, you know, uh, he, he's a tech guy and he wanted to post some things on, uh, you know, social media to try to get some people from the community to volunteer to help on the events committee. And um, I felt like, at the time, we didn't have an administrator, so I felt like at the time I needed to ask council if they were, if you guys were okay with us uh, uh, reaching out to the public. And um, so I was going to do that in June, but obviously uh, the meetings didn't happen. So um, then Christina was hired. <laughs> 
And so I met with her to make sure she was okay with the, the, the committee. And um, she actually has done, has a lot of experience with the parents and had some uh, good ideas. She still thinks the subcommittee ideas is good. Um, and she was going to approach Vish about how to you know, get people to, to volunteer on the committee. Do, are we stuck on just his own uh, social media or is there something more formal do you think from the well, village? That was, that, that was the question, should the village reach out and then approve the applicants, review their applications? You know, the, the other thing is we also talked about falls right around the corner. Um, mm -hmm. So would we even have time to get something organized for a brand new event? But because of Christina's experience, she felt like it's still a possibility. And she was, again, we were going to talk about the details of the retreat, uh, of what that would look like. Um, retreat or the, the joint meeting? Meeting. Joint, joint, joint meeting, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so what I'm asking for now is are you guys okay with the concept of a subcommittee for events? Uh, planning. Yeah, I say the I more the merrier. I think it's your board. Okay. So at the end of the day, if all of you agree that a subcommittee is the right way to do it, <clears throat> I think it's worth a try. I do have some personal doubts about um, you know getting people in to, to volunteer and taking on the responsibility um, because uh, the next event would be the, the Christmas event, mm -hmm. which is our biggest one, but right. it's the one we've had the most often, so we should have the most experience with. I know at one point um, staff had been um, directed to create a, you know, a notebook or a manual, or whatever you want to call it, with all the information that's in people's heads. It, it really came about with Lanny departing, mm -hmm. because so many things, he knew things, but nobody else had it in writing. But I don't think, Karen was directed to do that, and I think she left before she did it. So we also talked about that. That would help be helpful too. But um, I think it's worth a try to get people involved, um, you know, hopefully uh, free up the staff. But with also Christina's experience, I feel more comfortable now <laughs> with her being involved with the committee. I just was not comfortable with um, particularly Vicious. He's new to the, sure. to the board and... Um, with the big event being Christmas, I was not completely comfortable, but I'm not, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable now that Christina is here. Yeah. So. Can I ask a couple other questions? Mm -hmm. With every new committee on board, of course, we need to have someone there taking minutes and then taking those actions and bringing them back. Do we have the staff resources to do that? Well, on the rules and procedures, it says that it's the chairperson's responsibility to, to take the. Uh, Sorry, I can hear you the way she on the, on the rules and procedures, it says that uh, the chairperson, it, that's their respons responsibility, and to report back to our uh, board okay. uh, every meeting after that. So you actually drew up the rules and procedures for us? <coughs> no, no, it's okay. in our, uh, actually, I, I, I have the rules and procedures. Oh, you the PRMG? Yeah. Oh, got it, okay. Yeah. It is my intent to be in, involved, so I can, as a, if, if it's required from the staff standpoint, I can make sure that it gets done either by the chair or, you know, I'll do it or, you know, approve it when she does it. So I just know that's always been the toughest part about adding on committees is having the staff support. Well, I know in the past staff has always stepped up and we thank them and continue to thank them, but you are not can't always be assured that that's right. it. So what I would also encourage Vesh or whoever is there's a lot of groups. We've always tapped into the Boy Scouts. We've always tapped into Girl Scouts or high school kids need community service hours and stuff, but if, if there may be some, someone that heads that up to assure that they're getting their community services. But again, new, new event, what's it gonna be? How much is gonna be involved in stuff? And I think what I'm hearing is there's support for the subcommittee and there's certainly support, I think, because we used to have two movies, movie nights, and I'm not saying it has to be a movie night, but whatever event it is, I, you know, I think that's what, I think uh, if we decide to do a fall event, we will have to have it. Uh, our meeting, our joint meeting is August 30th. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to have a pretty good idea of what we're suggesting right. and the costs and so forth. So if that doesn't happen at the August 30th meeting, then we'd be talking about the Christmas event. And is there still money left in the budget since we canceled the, um, because it was a rain out, I believe, for the first event? I don't think night. it was that due to that because they came to us in April. There was actually, Monies outside of that, so we, there may actually be. Additional. Yeah, I feel like in the budget there was like 
three or four events, and we only had like three plans, yeah. so there was extra money in the budget for okay. another event. Yeah. The only other thing, if this is no one's addressed for communication, I think it's fine when people, just as just me personally, having a fair understanding of our rules and protocols. I think mm -hmm. if you're going to do an official call for people to join a committee, mm -hmm. I really believe that that should come through the village and that should be, you know, overseen by those. But of course, what people individually do on their social media pages in terms of inviting other people to know, that's, that's a separate issue. Um, but you want to make sure that major communication is sponsored by the group. Right. I think we were talking about a, a minimum of one additional person, but we feel like two would be about what we want. Um, and we don't know what we're going to get. But I agree with you. I think it would be better um, you also want to be able to review the applicants and make sure that you, know, yeah. you, you feel they're appropriate. Like a, yeah, background checks you need? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. This is someone who doesn't have some, you know, they, they, they own an event or they're a caterer or something like that. You know, you wouldn't want that. Yeah. So just, can I ask just a clarity question here? So. You know, there's two ways we could form a, an event subcommittee, and I, I don't know if it's defined in your rules of procedure, I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet, but we could take applications just as we would any normal board vacancy, or we could select, you know, you and I could select folks that we feel would be a good team, put them together, come to y'all for your recommendation or approval. If y'all want to add anybody else to it, that's fine. Um, yeah, at the time we didn't, you know, have your experience and know right. people that we felt like we could tap on the shoulder and say, can you, you know, be on this? Um, but I think you know people and you respect them, you know, you don't necessarily need to go out to the public to get people. I think as long as they're filling in an application time and, and accomplishing it before going through all the same procedures, having people you can tell them <coughs> is great. But you want to make sure that you've got things on file. Knowing that we potentially have this doll that we need to feel like we put it very fast. On. Okay. Do you have anything else? No. Okay. Thank you for um, that and look forward to, uh, what, I guess, August 30th. Then, yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Okay. Next up, uh, we have. Uh, Discussion uh, 7D, which is discussion or consider approval of rules of procedure, public comment, and debate section changes. So that is that was a 5C, so I'm changing my things. So, um, Christina, you had made a comment that you referenced. I remember reading in here, and I didn't make my note where it is exactly about the responding, and I know, Tim, you were. A proponent of responding to counsel. When public comment happens, a lot of times, sometimes we have or have had in the past some council members wanting to respond to that. And I think that's um, what we yes. were talking about because sometimes, in my view, that we just need as a council to listen and absorb and not necessarily have a knee jerk reaction to something that somebody says, even though. And I think there should be a proper way to respond to that concern from the citizen or comment from the citizen. But doing it in an open meeting, I don't think is the proper time. I think you and I discussed that privately that uh, that can kind of, you know, it, 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 it's, I don't think it's the right process because number one, we don't have a chance to look into whatever they're claiming um, a lot of times or, or just on comments. Correct, it's a time for the public to comment, not debate. And I think that the public needs to feel free to come in and make comments without feeling attacked by people on council. And so I don't think that we need to be responding um, immediately to that. And if we want to later on, then we can do that. But I don't think that we need to uh, be addressing that okay. at that time. So do we, Nick, yeah. I mean, historically, as long as I'm not counsel, or most of the time I'm not counsel, we never did have any back and forth during public comments. When they, covered, they came in, the public said what they wanted to say, and said thank you. And, and at most, at most, maybe the council comments at the end, so you might say something. You know, you have an opportunity maybe to say something, but certainly not. You know, it shouldn't be a time of debate or you know, uh, making anybody. That, wants to make a public comment and say, oh, if I go in there and say something, I'm going to get jumped on. 
know, it, yeah. it discourages people from saying what they want to say. So I think if council really at that point should just be there to listen and, yeah. and absorb what they say, whether they agree with it or not. I mean, it's that's the public, you know, that's their time to make their comment at their say. I so, have a comment there, though. I think it's one thing if the person is just providing constructive feedback. It's another thing if there's somebody actually claiming that someone else has done something illegal. Um, and in the past, we haven't necessarily always had uh, the mayor or the person presiding over the meeting call out when someone is, is saying things that, that shouldn't be said. We also have rules about decorum. So it's, I have no absolutely no issues with that, but I have listened to meeting audio where um, well, I can only thankfully can only think of one instance in the last year, but they were at the podium making allegations of things that were illegal in nature and claiming that someone on the council had done something illegal. That doesn't mean I think they need to be able to respond during public comment. That's not what I'm saying. But I do think you have to be mindful that sometimes people with public comment aren't necessarily doing it with a good interest of just giving feedback. They've got some other um, agenda that you believe that people have the right to defend themselves against criminal um, allegations of criminal activity. But the well, I do know that I made a public comment uh, last year that had nothing to do with legal proceedings at all and got jumped all over by two council members. And it was totally legitimate questions. Um, so I think that it just needs to, if, if something happens where council is, is attacking Somebody making a public comment, it's, it's just not okay. I didn't see anything about attacking. Um, I, I know, but I did. I, I, because now I'm speaking, I'll let you speak, it's my turn. Um, I didn't say anything about attacking. What I'm saying is that I think that there are instances when the allegations are significant enough, and I'm not talking about anyone on this council, so I don't really know what that's about. Not, no idea. But aside from that, I do think that there are times when someone from the public, if they're making specific allegations, um, and those allegations at least border, if not directly um, follow the line of criminal code, there should be the ability to respond only in that, in that circumstance. Other than that, I, I absolutely agree that it's for the, for the public and the, the council should be willing to take everything from the good, the bad, the ugly, other than anything that kind of borders a, a criminal allegation. And I didn't say that you said attacking. Those were my words because that is how I felt. So, so, I say you said it. so just to be clear, I think the recommendation was, or what we're proposing, is that we have a process where staff, a staff member or a council member, will respond, and then, um, and we can put it on the next agenda and address it if it if it became such a legal matter. But what we don't want to do, I think the goal is, regardless is, listen, I've, I've listened time and time again of you know, people claiming things that are absolutely false. And I want to be able to just say that's just absolutely not true. But however, it's not the time for debate. And I think the answer that we're proposing is <clears throat> that we absorb it and have a staff member either reach out after we talk about it, reach out to that person, and, and, and or determine or be, be prepared if it is a legal matter to discuss it at the next meeting and put it on the agenda. It's just not a time, even if it is illegal, they have the right to say whatever they want to say, even if it is illegal, that it's just not the time for debate. And I think you had said in council comments, if that, if one particular council member is being attacked and he chooses to use his time and defend his thing, I think he has the right to do that, but it's just not the time for a debate and it, it's, it certainly doesn't, doesn't help the process. So we need to make a motion to Actually, I still have another issue with that. I have, it's actually a broader issue. What I noticed was that in the packet, the, um, the changes were made to the rules of procedure that were adopted on August 8th, yet there was another set um, that were adopted on October 10th. And so I think that before we talk about making changes to this copy and approving changes to this copy, I think you need to make sure that we're working off the most, most recent copy. And October 10th is the one I have. There could even be one after that. Um, but I know for sure that there were changes adopted after that. So um, I just want to be sure that uh, we're making the changes to the right one. 
And then in line with what the mayor has suggested, it's because only now am I getting context for that, that change that, that was drafted. Is the idea then of reaching out to staff or board member, that's so that someone kind of specifically talks to that public, the person who made the public comment and addresses them? Is that was, that was the idea? That was the idea. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood. So again, just before we make, make any changes, I feel like um, you, you need to make sure that we're working from the right copy. I don't think this is the right copy. Okay, I can clean up. And if because there's there's if also okay. one that's from from March on okay. here as well. So if y'all are okay with this verbiage that I've got in, and I know you're going to get to the next item, the debate item, but when we talk about this public comment section, if you're okay with that verbiage, I can just add that into the new edition as long as there's no substantial difference, differences in what's listed here. So that we're moving forward on that. Yep, that sounds good. Is everybody okay with that? I just want to read it one more time. Again. <clears throat> so can we just clarify that to say that seeking assistance through the public comment so we know in what context? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that would be my only suggestion. So this is that where was that? Seeking assistance through public comment yes. yes. to be contacted by. Okay. Huh? Where's the on I'm, I'm seeing the other one. I don't see. I know I read it. But it's on the debates. Oh, it's on, on the, the front. front. It's on the front. Okay. Are you looking for the debate item? Well, what the no. your verbiage I'm was. I'm looking okay. for the verbiage that okay. is in reference to what we're talking about. Prevent active engagement. That's what we want to do. Public conversation mm -hmm. and prevent usage. Okay. That one's 15. Okay. Yeah, but it's. Yeah, I'm still looking for the where we have with the rules that we have staff reach out. What go 15? No, it's yeah, so it reads go. citizens asking what, what through what Ms. Guta said. Um, okay, citizens that. asking questions or seeking assistance through public comment shall be contacted by a member of staff or a member of the governing body, governing board after the meeting. Cancel shall not engage in active debate or commentary with citizens within the public comment. Yeah, I think, I think we. Can it, Read the first sentence one more time, Christina. Citizens asking questions or seeking assistance through public comment shall be contacted by a member of the staff, member of staff, or a member of the governing board after the meeting. I mean, it does, isn't that kind of implied since it's in the public comment section? Correct. I think she um, just, just, just wanted to. I, know I read it. I wasn't quite sure if that was just in general or not. Well, it's under the public comment section, so I would assume that it would be talking about public comments. Yeah, the three words would be um, And also, do we make that determination at that meeting if there's like an accusation or something like that, and, and you know, maybe myself or uh, say we'll we'll have staff at that point yeah, say we'll have we'll staff, staff get back appreciate to you. your concerns. We'll have staff yes. get back to you and and direct um, yes. one of the. Mm -hmm council members at that point that's involved or happens to be involved to get the information to yes. that staff member. That so. makes sense. And then maybe even have a meeting between the council member, mm -hmm. staff member, and the person who has a complaint or something like that. So that's, um, so. All right, so we do make a motion. Anybody have anything else? Did you change anything on rule 25? Oh, we haven't gotten there We haven't yet. got okay. there yet, so let's keep going. So are um, we making the proposed changes to add those words in that rule 13 or I mean if you guys want to I don't think it's needed because it's in the public comment section but if you want that's yeah. fine seeking assistance yeah through public comment. well it, it does say within um with citizens within the public comment period so uh, yeah. technically I don't think um it's it's a it's not ne it's not necessary through public comment period because you're under the comment period yeah. section right. so but it's not a necessary this is the council's deliberation so not the staff. but that's but i but i but agree i'm the clerk with of the this council. Council. Yes. Yes. Sorry, it doesn't matter. Um, but i will uh, i'm fine with how it is we can make okay. a motion to um approve that as um as stated and yeah so i'll need a motion to approve the amendment to rule number 15. so moved further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Motion passes. Um, next up is the, <clears throat> we okay. talked about uh, uh, the rule 25. Rule 25 about utilizing 
phones and during debate and stuff. I think we've, uh, you know, I've witnessed and seen and, um, where communications are going with council members in the debate, looking at their phones and, you know, being whatever, communicated to by someone in the audience and stuff like that. And that just needs to stop. We, we need to come prepared. I know there's a lot of factors involved. People like to use their computers and stuff. But I think that if you're prepared enough and you have something that you want to discuss, whether it's on your computer, we can, you know, do it in time. We can give it to the clerk where she can put that up there. But phones should be down. And we also talked about, like, there's an emergency that contact information should be, emergency contact information should be given to, uh, the clerk's name and them, you know, to call them and then they would asked me to call for a recess to address the issue if it's an emergency but we shouldn't be looking at our phones and and you know getting text messages about what to say and that sort of thing in fact there's actual case law that uh, was in Mooresville I believe where that was being done and they went through a, uh, a court and they disallowed any use of cell phones during the meeting so when that practice is being done it's actually in violation of uh, um, a law that, uh, and I'd just like to adhere to. Well, no, hold on. It's not a violation of a law. It's a violation of their rules of procedure in Mooresville. Right. So we're going to make our rules and procedures, is what we're saying. But they ruled, the, the, I think, I believe a court ruled that it was um, not allowed to use the, their uh, phones and stuff. So I'll, I'll leave it for counsel to debate. Bill, <clears throat> um, I know that you also went to the last meeting, so I'm just going to um, offer this. I actually have zero premise. With no problem with the premise. As you can tell, I don't even have my phone on the table. I never have, except that um, I am the mother of a special needs child. And there are a lot of women and a lot of men who have uh, children with special needs. And in fact, it's actually gotten more precarious as he's gotten older. Um, he has autism. And now that he's turned 16, he wants to be home alone a lot more often. And we try to do that. So the idea that um, if my phone buzzes, in particular, that's what I do. I don't actually even have it on ring. Um, and I can't pick it up and answer it regardless is, is a problem. And I feel that that really isolates the number of people who, in that predicament, who are actually on boards and who are on the council. Um, and so under those circumstances, there's no way I'm feeling comfortable about having my autistic son contact a staff member who then is going to pass that on to me. Luckily, knock on wood, that situation's never occurred, but I think it would be, we'd be remiss if we didn't truly understand what um, all the scenarios when we're, we're talking about invoking a rule like this. Again, this is, I, mean, I, I, I have no problem with somebody having their cell phone, uh, again, on, on, the, on the table, and if it rings, you know, then saying, well, excuse me, it's my son calling or whatever, and, Picking it up and answering it. I, I'm more concerned, I guess, with the texting. You know, we were again. We were. I think part of the thing with the that I had read was with the texting when council members are texting between each other. It's almost a, a violation of the open meetings law, and that you know, this what they're doing is not on the record. So I mean, as far as again, if the phone rings and it's, I have no problem with a council member saying, "Excuse me." Yeah. I pulled mean, my son and my wife, from my, you know, and right, exactly. you know, then saying, uh, well, what exactly just, was the, you know, it's something, you know. Because it, cause it says utilize text or messaging applications on their personal or village provided cell phones. It doesn't say anything about taking a phone call. Right. Yeah, I'm saying <coughs> so, yeah. so, no, but he texts. I mean, you would know that. My kids don't even know how to use a phone. <laughs> um, most of the time, it's always a text. So, um, again, like I said, I don't have it here, but if it buzzes, I can feel it at my feet. And, and so it, it does make a difference. And then I, at that point, um, and I, I understand what you're saying, and I'm empathetic to that, um, but this is talking about specifically when we're in debate talking about certain things and stuff, but to your point, if he is texting you, you may have to excuse yourself from that debate. And if it's serious enough issue mm -hmm. and um, excuse yourself from the debate and take the call, emergency call, whatever it is and stuff, but... Uh, um, but you can understand that, and I don't know how, how, to what degree we're talking about enforcement, but if someone goes to reach down and pull it out and they're looking at their phone and the presiding officer says, well, wait a second, you're not supposed to have your phone, of course you need to pull it out to see who it is, who's texting you. So I don't know if 
to me, it's, it's, it's always about finding a solution or a wording solution. I don't know if there's something in here that could be added with regard to, you know, emergency calls from immediate family or something to that effect. Um, but I just feel like there has to be at least some room for certain, certain familial provisions, especially because so many people on these boards and on the council don't really make a lot of Well, for, for our intents and purposes, it's really just for, I mean, every board has their own rules and stuff. This is just for council meetings that we are talking about active debate and stuff. I expect council members to come prepared and when and we're middle of the debate and all of a sudden someone picks up their phone and starts reading from it in the debate, that's what we want to definitely get away with or doesn't have anything to say, picks up his phone and all of a sudden has another comment to say. So again, it's all public record that can be accessed that, you know, where that phone call was coming from. Um, and who it's coming from during that meeting and stuff. So we're just trying to avoid that um, chatter from the um, the outside that's trying to help that, you know, get their point across and stuff. I know it's been done before in, in previous councils and stuff, so I'm just trying to avoid that. So however we get to the verbiage. Can you work on that? I just, well, I just want to note to, for clarity purposes, and that's the reason that I stuck it specifically in that debate section, because I wanted to, offer cancel the opportunity to reach down and you know look at their phone in between items if somebody you know texting and multiple times back to back but the debate when you open the floor for debate it's the time where we're going to be focused on it not just picking it up and looking right. at it so right. my interpretation of that is just for example for sake of this meeting we're getting ready to end this item we're going to talk about staff protocol um, changes during that transitional period you know, you could pick up your phone and say, who was that that just texted me five times? So that was kind of the intent as, as to why it was listed in the debate section, because it gives that opportunity in between items, the split second to look at it. Right, that makes right. sense. Yeah, and that, that's how I read that too, because it was during debate is where I was focused at, but when we were in the middle of debate is what that's so. That's It's hard, and I, I completely appreciate that, because, and I, <clears> I know what you mean. It's hard to define when debate period is sometimes, especially here. Um, I think maybe, can, is there some way you said at no point shall a member utilize is a good word because to me checking is not utilizing. Um, could we maybe add on an addendum that just says this is not to exclude or sorry, not meant to exclude um, checking for emergency um, I don't know, notifications from immediate family members or something like that. So I can add an addition that says not meant to exclude an emergency familial contact. Or right, and text. I would use the word notification only because it implies notification as opposed to utilization. Right? I'm sorry, yes, make that be that more <laughs> Using the word like notification, like checking on a notification, okay. as opposed to utilizing. Because I think you're right in using this word. At no point shall a member of council utilize, right, text or messaging applications. I, I'm parsing words here. But if we're talking, making the distinction between utilizing it and then just checking a notification. But that's my only worry there is that I would like to be able to just say, oh, there is an excuse myself. So is everyone okay with just adding, you know, parentheses that says not meant to exclude emergency familial notifications? Sure. Is that that's the only thing I really need to have in there? All right. Again, I guess I have a different feeling on this in reality, but I mean, my my concern more is just like I said, texting between council members or you know during a meeting, and and again, possibly violating the open you know, meeting law. Would texting uh, from an outside source well, be I mean, violating I, too? I mean, in my opinion, if somebody in the, you know, if I if there's somebody in the in the audience that, <laughs> that text, you know, wants to text me and say, hey, what about the, you know, you forgot about uh, putting this or saying this or, or what about this issue? Uh, I don't know that that's you know to me that's that's just a comment from the from somebody that's here, and if, if I want to take it, I can. If I don't, I don't have to. It's you know, I don't consider that the same as, I don't really have a problem with somebody in the audience, uh, you know, or somebody in the, uh, you know, sitting here texting, you know, 
I mean, if they if they had the access to tax or whatever, but I'm I'm more concerned about the you know again the, the private conversation going on between members of council while you know that would be you know yeah. that's fair if you look at. Congress and stuff, you have people whispering well, behind them as they're presenting and they're updating and stuff, so technically that, you know, so, I mean. Uh, I just worry, you know, I just say, you know, how do you enforce it then? It becomes a thing of, you know, if the phone rings and I say, it's, oh, it's my wife. We, well, how about this? How about this? We come to an how about this? We come to an agreement that say it is from the outside source and stuff. I'm just getting, and you can just announce that I'm just getting a note that I'm forgetting this. Can we discuss this rather than, you know, I mean, because that to me is like yeah, be having your personal assistant being behind you, going, make sure you talk about this yeah. and this, and we don't miss anything because we do. We're up here. Um, and uh, I, again, I agree to your fact that it, it does violate open meetings when you're discussing between two council members and stuff, but there are times when we are forgetful or, and if we address the personal... And I think that would be reasonable to say that, well, I just got a, a reminder text. Saying, yeah. you know, to discuss this or whatever, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know. Are we all okay with that? No, I don't know what we're doing. Like, how are we wording this then? Well, I think she can come, uh, if it's okay, you can yeah, get the verbiage and come back in August, in, uh, August 9th meeting, and have it for us. Okay. And then we'll work on that. Because I just think the old way is going to be too burdensome to try okay. and... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it would be a uh, okay. thing. Uh, Very good. And that's all we had on that, is that correct? You. Consider important. Um, 7C, discussion or consider approval of changes in staff meeting protocol changes. So that was a 5B issue that before. Um, and, and Christina, I think we were trying to give you the autonomy of kind of running this as you see fit, as your, your you know, how you want to see as far as productive. If in the past and you hadn't been here and stuff, there would be times when council members would just show up unannounced and literally take hours of numerous different staff just because they like to talk. And, and uh, I, I think we need to get more to a, um, a you know, put in a sign-in sheet I think that's appropriate and stuff but if you're just coming in to say hi like you had mentioned here pick up your mail and stuff like that and it's not going to be long that's fine but any official meeting is by appointment and I think you were or having another staff member be in attendance during that time and, and stuff so um, uh, you know so it's, so it doesn't get to the point where we we don't again Nick and I have talked about this we, we don't want us, you know, managing whether it's personnel issues or anything like that, but and we also don't want one in particular council person coming in and start directing you and treating staff as if they're their personal secretary and stuff like that. So it's it's more of a meeting what we're discussing, whether it's financial issues, whatever. But it's more um, where another staff member is. Did did everyone get a chance to read that, look at that, and have any issues with it? Any meetings that are requested have to go through the administrator, you know, whether it's with the, with the, uh, you know, the financial person or whatever. I mean, and the administrator then will find out if they have the time for it or if it, you know, if it's, you know, she's just in charge of the office. So I think, uh, you know, if somebody needs to go through the administrator to set up an appointment with the uh, other, part, other staff members. I completely agree. I, a, lot, a lot of the questions and comments I had were along those lines, too. Um, I think that just strictly as written, it might be difficult to enforce. And to be honest, I'm, I'm so ecstatic about having an administrator which I believe is very capable. And I think um, if there have been problems in the past, and there have, um, that uh, a part of that is perhaps maybe we didn't have um, the strength of the helm that, that was needed or proper protocol and procedure. And what that will look like, I think is going to be so much up to you that I almost feel like making policies or rules like that at 
this point, when you've just sort of come on, um, circumvents the ability for you to get your variance and figure out what works best. So that's not that I don't feel like there should be more policies and protocols in place. I just think you're the best person to figure out what those policies should be. And if do you have more questions? Or, okay, so I think I'm, that I'm, I'll leave it at that. That's the biggest one. Okay. So if I could include some language in there, I think it encompasses everyone's concerns, and that's just all appoint the the verbiage that I added in here was all appointments between council and staff considered to be non-routine in nature shall consist of blah blah blah. So we could add the verbiage in there that says all appointments between council and staff considered to be non-routine in nature shall be initiated through the administrator and then carry that in the rest of the verbiage out. If y'all are okay with that, I think it leaves the... Um, you mean when you say non-routine? Like if somebody's coming to pick up their, get signed checks or someone's coming to pick up their agenda packet or just something that's typical. Question. But we talked about <laughs> that. It's like if it's just a non-routine you're coming, but if you have, like, Nick, you want to talk to Christine, Chris about a finance thing. And so you'd be like basically routine, calling the administrator saying, "Hey, I need to set up an appointment. Here's my time. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's I, it's almost one extra step we're taking. But what we're saying is, you know, I mean, normally anyone could call Chris and we'd sit down with her and talk to her and stuff. What we're saying is, it Honestly, should be. I I almost uh, I guess I'm more or less looking for a gatekeeper. Uh, in fact, it. I mean, I could come in to pick up my mail or whatever, and then decide I'll stop talking to Chris, and then start asking a question, and then spend an hour over and Right. That's what we want to do. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, let me clarify what I just said, because I think I said something wrong. Non-routine is, is the opposite of what. So routine would be Joe's coming to sign checks or pick up his mail. That doesn't require any type of initiation through me. So that keep that in okay. the same play that we've got now. Things that are non-routine would be those things where you want to come in and talk about Budget. But I'm saying you could you could circumvent that by like I said I could circumvent that by, by coming in picking up my mail saying hello hi yeah. how you doing and you know, then you know and then sit down with her and talking. I mean know, then you need to get the staff. But, but, yeah, go ahead. No I know I was just gonna say yeah. you just need staff needs to know that they need to say you don't have an appointment yeah. go talk to Christina sorry yeah. like I'd love to talk to you but I'm busy. In, in your you staff meeting I think you just need to be very clear with staff members right. saying look this is you know now going into discussion we don't have an appointment for this and and, and we do want. Yeah. I mean, two if, people if, there. If it, if, it goes be, if it goes beyond how you feel, that's a family. That's right. Know, it starts yeah. becoming a, it's right. anything to do with, <laughs> yeah. anything to do with, you know, what so. So if you want to, I mean, that, that I agree with you 100% of stuff. So that's that's kind of where I'm going with okay. this and stuff. So. Can I ask a quick, a quick devil's advocate, though? You know, just make sure. It, so what happens then if there's phone calls to that effect? Are then saying that we're going to... And I'd used to. I mean, but Lisa, I would schedule that phone call and say, I'm going to call you at one. Um, I just want to know whether that's something that needs to be addressed or discussed here because if we're, I, I don't want people looking for ways to circumvent it either. Good point. Um, I think phone calls that are going to take, that's no different in my view of walking in here and starting a conversation with someone and taking up their time. It's still taking up staff time. So if we can make an appointment to do a phone call where two staff members are available to address, if it's non-routine, um, to address those things. Because it's, I, I look at, in fact, I actually get ticked off when I'm in line and I'm waiting to be served and then a phone call comes in and they answer the phone before they get to me and I was before them. So it's like, it's the same thing. Um, so in addressing the phone calls, I think that's the same if we're going to talk non-routine because that's, I'd like to get to that where it's just a phone call and we're not having to have to physically be here, but a lot of times we do and we have meetings. So, so let me just clarify just so I'm understanding correctly. I'm just going to read from my notes that I've taken on revisions that I'll make. Council members and board members shall notify and or schedule appointments or phone calls with staff prior to visiting. With the administrator. With you. Yes, I need to, well I've got that in the second okay. section. I need to add that in to next member and board member shall initiate appointments and or phone calls through the administrator yep. with staff prior to visiting yep. or calling. And then the same thing in that next section. All appointments between council all appointments slash phone calls between council and staff shall be initiated through. It'll be a redundancy there, but I think it'll make sure that it's clear. Mm -hmm. Is that two 
place too much of a burden on you, though, for everything to go for you, as long as that I don't think so. I think because, you know, some people may not be contacting the right person for the right thing, so I think that if they contact me and say, hey, I need to talk to someone about the park's operation budget, maybe Derek knows more about that specific item right. than Chris does. Right. Um, so I think that if they, you know, initiate it through me, I'll be able to direct them to what's what's the most appropriate staff person okay. Um, okay. for non-routine things. I mean, for the routine things, I mean, it's pretty standard. They've been used to signing checks. They go see Chris or whatever. Right. Okay. All right. Are y'all okay with that language? Okay. Yes. Do we need a motion to approve that? No. Are you going to clean it up or do you want I can, to I can clean it clean up. Clean up and then put it on the okay. approval, put okay. it on the consent yeah. agenda or something. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, 70 discussion. Oh. Consider approval of Village Engineers sample four year road program. Chris, is it here? But this is just that sample that she had mentioned in the last meeting that y'all wanted to see a copy of it. So, do you know what's your next year? The next year, no, no, but do we know? Say, it. I'm sorry, say that again. Do we know? Oh, never mind. I got it. I got it. Sorry, I got it. Okay. So the first couple pages get you the condition. They, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what their questions were, but you know, in the past, I've seen them make the criteria based on the number of cars that travel the road, um, if it's through roads, how you know how it's utilized, how bad it is. And then um, they basically score it from 1 to 100. Is there, just out of curiosity, um, some sort of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, index for what this is talking about? Because I would imagine maybe some constituents, members of the thing, want to know why our reasoning, what the reasoning is for the way we're doing roads and the order we're doing roads. If we provide this in the PDF file, is this does this come with a I guess a an index saying okay this is what this means L L I G S E D what does that mean and stuff yeah we can get the criteria well it says right there I have no idea what that means L L E I G S E V I don't need it's it. nothing to me but it looks like we're basically going to get everything done in the next four years minus what's to be done this year is that about right yes. Mm -hmm. And then awesome. at some point in the next few years, we will start <coughs> accepting new roads from DHA. Everything we get, we'll get everything done that we have scheduled to get done. Yeah. Not necessarily all 30 roads, just to be oh, clear. Oh, no, it's pretty close. It is, it is close. I haven't looked to see if it's every single road. But well, is there anything? Yeah. It's pretty doggone So close anything, there. did we determine anything above, below? Above 85, did we move the bar up a little bit? I mean, all, I mean, like stuff that's like way down is getting done next year and then. But what I'm saying, did we provide, did council have moved the bar on what is acceptable uh -uh. to the village of Marvin? Uh-uh. I think we need to probably look at that and say, you know, but I don't know because that. DOT's ratings versus our personal ratings, yeah. DOT says my roads are an 85. I may, in my neighborhood, say that I disagree. There's a lot of stuff. That, you know, so I, I just don't want to know if we've clarified, and we'd have to go back through the notes and find out if we've clarified. If we, I think I want to say we did move that bar. Um, we moved it. Down. What did we move it down or up? I can't remember. What's that? The bar of, of what is acceptable by DOT standards. The bar t to them is those roads aren't on the agenda to get fixed. Meaning, if you're a ninety some percent, ninety six, you're not right scheduled. Right. But if you're eighty five or below, I believe below fifty or sixty. Something yeah, like that. I guess to clarify. clarify. Along that, those lines, I was, you know, maybe because this is not something I'm familiar with. I would love just to, to see like a, a more thorough staff report for this that okay. just gives a general overview of what this is doing because the, the spreadsheet itself is. Great, but it's got a lot of information that's not really clear. So it will probably address, I think, what some of the things the mayor is saying is what's our criteria, you know, everything like that. So whatever the history is in terms of putting this together and why and how. And then maybe even something a little more clear, like the schedule is this. Um, 
XYZ community will be scheduled. That's like right here. I know, I know, but but yeah. almost then you got to go through this to figure it out. It's almost like you have to dig in. It's like is, is this our general one? policy is things. So the what's what we know is on the agenda. Like I think uh, Weddington Chase is going to be one of the first of that. Yeah, that's going in, so, yes. Yeah, we'll but try that, to knock it down and put it okay. in more layman's terms. And make it easier. That's where I'm going. Is um, is this stuff that we can like tell people now? This this is not something that y'all have approved, from my understanding, completely. I think this is the sample that they have given us for. And, but this is basically what DOT is saying. Yeah, that's our they, engineers. It's your engineer, right? But I mean, it, it's the it's AMT working with DOT. Right. Is there is there a recommendation as to how y'all should do it? Well, okay. it's more of AMT's. Oh, it's AMT's recommendation. Yes. So we need to say this looks good? You need to say it looks good and you approve it, and that's how we'll move forward. Oh, okay. All right. So if y'all want me to do a, a better staff analysis and kind of put it in layman's terms, I can do that, no problem. If y'all want to table that again. It helps me defend it better. Okay. It yes. helps me defend it better. So for the August, if we could do that, and I can say to a, a neighbor, why isn't my roads getting well? Here's why. <clears throat> um, done with that. Uh, next up, we have seven E discussion review of new council member applications. Um, given the circumstances, I still think we keep the application process out there because we don't know what the determination is going to be. I don't know if there's much more that needs to be said about that, but we'll have the applications on file. Typically, I believe we keep them on for two years. Two years. Um, <clears throat> but. Uh, you know, I know we've put, I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said about this because we just don't know what, which direction we are going to go as we go forward. So, and I'll leave it open to the council. Um, my one question with this is, have we let um, Sarah Hinton know that yes. she's not eligible? Okay. Yes, we verified that and let her know. Did she ask but to be annexed in tomorrow? <laughs> 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 they can do that. Okay. Know, so. All right. Well, I could pass that on to her yeah. if she would like to. You know, I mean, I mean it voluntary. usually goes by, I think we talked about it, but going by streets and blocks, I think when I had that discussion with Lisa, how we annex and stuff, it's always an option, so. But uh, some good candidates there. Um, anything else? Any other comments? Okay. And we, everything else, and then that's it. I think we uh, need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you all.